Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's Clean With Me is going to be a little bit different. I asked if you guys had any questions over on my Instagram. If you are not following me on Instagram, you probably should. But I'm going to just be answering a few questions here today while I'm cleaning. So let's get to it. Okay, the first question here is, how do you find motivation on days where you wake up with none? Well, that happens to the best of us, Kathy. It really does. Um, I think the biggest thing that I do is I make a list. I make a list. And sometimes, most of the time, I will write things on the list that I know are attainable. So if that means I'm writing drink coffee on the list, then I'm writing drink coffee on the list. So that way I can cross something off. Um, I will also, with my list, prioritize what is the most important things that I do. If there's only certain things that are super important and then towards the bottom of the list, I'll be putting the things that I hope to do or want to do. So if I need certain clothes for the next day, you know, I'll put wash XYZ laundry on my list. If, if I have, you know, people coming over, I'll put clean the living room and clean the bathroom as the priority on my list. I have realistic expectations a lot of the times with the things that I can get done or the things I want to get done. Um, here lately, I've been having a lot of issues. Actually, you can see me taking some vitamins in this video. I didn't even realize this was in here, but I was taking zinc and vitamin D. Um, I think there was one more thing. I can't remember what it is. I will link them down below if you're curious about which supplements I was taking. But a lot of times, and especially like as the time of this video, I have been sick a lot. We were sick a lot of the winter. And so a lot of things did not get done in the way that I hoped that they would get done. But I like to prioritize things like food. So hopefully getting the dishes done and getting food prepared. So if that means um, getting at least one of the meals that is something that's a full meal, not just like something quick that the kids have grabbed or whatever. Um, so getting dinner ready would be a big priority for me. Um, if a shower needs to happen, that becomes a big priority, that kind of stuff. So the best way to find motivation where I have none, I also text my friends and I'll be like, do you have my motivation? Does someone have my motivation? Because I need motivation. Someone give it to me. There was a time in the really recent past that I could drink coffee and that also helped motivate me. So like I said, I would write coffee on the list and drinking that whole cup of coffee was part of my motivation gaining. So I don't know, maybe that'll help you. I hope it does. Okay, the next question that we have is what bedtime routine look like? So we have six children. Their ages right now are 12, almost 11, almost nine, seven, and almost six. And then we also have an eight month old. So for the children who are under the age of 10, their birth, their birthday, their bedtime is at 8 p.m. And then our 10 year old's bedtime is at 8.30. And our just turned 12 year old has negotiated a new bedtime. Um, I think his bedtime is 9.15, I can't remember. My husband said that when he was 12 that his bedtime was 9.30. And I just, I just didn't, I, I go to bed early, so I don't care at this point. I just need them to go to bed. Um, so my baby goes to bed with me. Sometimes she goes to bed at seven. Sometimes she goes to bed at nine. I don't know. It just depends. So she'll nurse to sleep with me. And like I said, the younger ones go to bed at eight. That means that we start brushing teeth after dinner and start getting ready for bed. Um, on as many of the nights as we can, we try to do a family Bible time. So that includes singing some Psalms and, um, Bible study a little bit. So reading part of the scriptures and going over the catechism that we go through. Um, so then after that, it's brushing teeth, everybody going to bed. Sometimes there's showers at night. We really don't have a routine. I guess all that to say, I don't know if there's actually a routine or like things that we do in a specific order, but we're just, you know, we're just trying to get stuff done as we can get it done. <laughs> We don't, we're not real routine, strict schedule type people. Okay, so the next question is, how many hours a day do you devote to homeschool? So I don't know if I have shared this. I have no idea. The last time I shared this on my YouTube channel, I have no idea. So we homeschool, and that means that we have a sixth grader, a fifth grader, a third grader, a first grader, and a kindergartner, I think. 
we use what is called the Robinson curriculum. I will link that below. I don't get any, I don't have like an association to it whatsoever. Um, my dad actually paid for the curriculum for us. It's a one and done curriculum that I can use for all of the kids, all of the children. Um, we buy the Saxon math books to use. So they have books that they have to read through a reading list, which through that they get their history, they get their uh, science, they get their social studies, and also they get their literature and English. And um, then we also do Saxon math, like I said, and they have one math lesson a day that they do. And then they can grade their own math and check their own work. So how many hours a day? <sighs> It really depends on the attitudes of the kids. Right now, the older three are doing math and the younger two are more doing workbooks and really just practicing their lower math facts. So addition facts from one to 20 and subtraction facts from one to 20 and then um, learning to read. So once a child in my house learns to read, that's when they are basically set off to go start tackling the book list. So they're reading every single day and they're doing math five days a week. So I don't know how long we spend homeschooling. Some days it feels longer than others, but a lot of what we do is it's parent supervised. Um, not necessarily that I am actively being the teacher in the classroom. Does that make sense? Um, if there are kids that come across concepts in math that they don't know how to do, I'm there to help. Um, most of the time it's very, very child led and parent supervised. So I'm making sure they're doing it. And a lot of my homeschool day is spent saying, do your math. Did you do your math? Finish your math. Look at your math, do your math. <laughs> so I don't know, a couple hours a day. I'm not totally sure. Okay. So the next question is what place do you spend the most time? Um, I think it depends on the season of life. So while I was pregnant, I came up with a chore chart for my kids and it covered everything from wiping off the kitchen counters to sweeping the floor to loading the breakfast dishes, loading the lunch dishes, unloading the breakfast dishes, unloading the lunch dishes from the dishwasher. Like it was as detailed as I could think of it at the time. And that carried us through postpartum. And while I had a newborn baby and all of that recovery, um, that chore chart, I no longer have the energy to even bother with. And that chore chart sort of got thrown into the wind. So I spend a whole lot more time doing dishes like you see me do here, where um, while I was pregnant, especially when I was really sick and then postpartum, um, the kids wash the dishes at every meal. So um, they had that as their chores and now they do significantly less chores than they used to. But that means I'm spending a lot more time in the kitchen. Um, another place that I spend a whole lot of time is where I am right now. I'm literally nursing a sleeping baby right now while I'm recording this voiceover. And I spend a lot of time in my rocking chair in my living room. And from that point in the house, I can direct children to do their math or to read a book or to go let the dogs out or whatever it is, whatever the case may be. So um, I'm not sure where I spend the most time between sleeping in my bed at night, uh, going to bed with the baby at eight, you know, in my chair in the living room or washing dishes in the kitchen or making food. So it's, it's between those places. Okay, this is a good question. What room do you love the most in your home? Okay, I think visually, if I had to pick a room that I liked the way that it looked and how the things that I have in it and maybe the things that we do in it the most, I would say my living room. Like I said, we have family Bible time in here. I have a piano in here. A lot of music and singing happens in this room. Not so much me playing. I don't want to come across as though it's me that's playing. But since we've started uh, practicing hymns with our Bible time, we have a speaker that we play the music with and sing together. Um, a lot of Bible studies that we host in our home happen in this living room, and I love that. Um, I just love the family aspect of our living room. Now, uh, we also do a lot of hosting, and the kitchen is the second most used room in the house. So whether I'm cooking or we're eating in our, you know, the dining room that attaches to the kitchen, or I'm just in the kitchen cleaning up and preparing meals or whatever it is that's happening, um, I love my kitchen also. So it's between those two rooms. I really, 
love my house. I love this house that we moved to. We moved here about five years ago and I love the layout. I love how usable this house is to me and um, I'm just really thankful for it. Okay, here's another question. It says, I know it's a while off, but do you have convictions regarding your children dating? Okay, this is a good question. And I have been humbled so many times with things that I thought or ideals that I wanted to have for my children. Now, like I said, my oldest is 12. Um, we are not into dating yet. Um, both my husband and I feel strongly that dating is not something that a Christian should do casually. Um, that dating should be for the purpose of marriage, seeking to find a spouse. Um, so with that being said, I'm, I'm sure that there will be a lot of conversations that we'll have with our children regarding that, but we aren't there yet. We aren't at that season of life yet. We can imagine how we'd like it to go. Um, we have a lot of time. Well, I suppose it goes faster than we imagine, but a little bit of time left to sit here and figure out how we're going to handle that. But So all of that to say doesn't mean that we have not discussed dating with our children, that we have not discussed marriage with our children and what that looks like. Um, we definitely have children's friends who are dating at this point. We have that in our friend circles. So this isn't something that's brand new to us. We've talked about marriage. We've talked about um, what purity looks like. We've talked about a lot of these different concepts already. So it won't be brand new when we start making boundaries or things like that with our children for dating. Okay, so this one is a good question from Shalise. This says, hardest season of homemaking and what you do to combat it. So I think in the past, I probably would have said maybe postpartum is a really hard season of homemaking. Um, like I had said earlier in this video, we had a chore chart that was really, really helpful through the postpartum time with my kids. And I had a lot of people being like, hey, I can take some of your kids, you know, like during the postpartum time as though that would be helpful. But I kept trying to explain to them, no, I have, I have sewn, I have sewn very, very difficult postpartum times where I had five kids in six years and it was all on me. And I was a stay at home mom and I did all the work and all the diaper changes and all the bath times and all the food and all the cleaning and every chore, you know, I did all of it. And this past year I had a baby and um, my children had been so trained that they could do the chores and that was fantastic so there was there was a sweet time of reaping that I had this year but then my health sort of fell apart and I would say that has been my hardest season of homemaking so it is very difficult to have hyperemesis which is what I've had for all of my pregnancies which is a lot of um, a lot of vomiting a lot of extreme nausea, a lot of throwing up and just, you know, inability to really do much. And um, I had that this past time. I also broke my foot and my ankle in three places with this last baby also. Um, it was just a very difficult pregnancy. And then the postpartum this time was better because I had lots of children to help me and lots of hands that did a lot of things. Um, but then my health started to fall apart in other ways. Um, I started struggling with high blood pressure. I started struggling with my gallbladder and gallbladder attacks. Um, it has taken me several months now to really feel like I've gotten that under control. It's been three or four weeks now since I've had a gallbladder attack and it was happening every day, every other day, sometimes a couple times a day for a little while there, which was just debilitating pain for an hour or more, several hours. So there have been... I guess many seasons of not having my health and that I think is the hardest to home make in the middle of that because there's so much I can't do um, and that's really, really, really hard to watch and sit there and not be able to do a thing. As far as what I do to combat those hard seasons, um, some of them have been a ride it through, some of them like ride it out kind of thing. Um, you know, pregnancy has an end date. And so I'll only be sick for so long because pregnancy is only so long at the very most. And that helps with that. Um, another thing that I would say helps is that I have trained my children and I've put in the time to um, make sure that they know how to accomplish certain tasks. 
Um, another thing that I have going on right now, like I said, with my gallbladder, that's been something that we've been dealing with for several months, many months now, and it is debilitating to say the least. Um, I have tried many different diets. I have really been using that brain power to try to figure out uh, different ways to heal my body and to function with this. Um, thankfully, I have found a lot of resources and had a lot of success with that. Um, I have done the liver cleanse and the gallbladder cleanse. Um, I have cut even more things out of my diet that I already had pretty restricted. Um, but it is proving to be successful. And so that is a huge blessing, but even still prioritizing that healing in that time of sickness is going to make it long-term so that I'm going to be more successful in homemaking because, um, you know, I can't home make if I'm not here or if I'm completely laid out. So getting better is uh, part of that, you know. Okay, last question here. What kind of routines do you have in place? Okay, so routines. I would say the biggest routines that we have and the biggest priorities that we have are church and the times that we our go to church. Bible studies that we host in our home and then things like my husband's work or people we're hosting at our house and then homeschool. Um, so a lot of the homemaking things that I do revolve around those. So that means when I'm getting kids in showers, when I'm cleaning the house, when I'm prepping food, um, a lot of those things just really revolve around how to have success in those areas where we have these priorities. So that means, um, you know, on Sundays when we're hosting people in our homes, when are, when do I get to clean or prepare food? It's going to be before that, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of our routines aren't like, you know, Wednesdays we mop the floors. It's not like that anymore. Um, when I was using the chore chart, a lot of it was like that where it was, you know, certain days the walls got washed and certain days the floors got mopped and stuff like that. And I may bring that back again in the future, um, probably pretty soon, but uh, for right now, it's just as needed, a lot of as needed and as needed with regard to what we have going on in our schedule. So I don't know if that helps or if that answers that question or I don't know. It's just, we're doing what we can when we can. Okay. So that's all the questions that I have for today. If you enjoyed this type of Q and A, well, I did a clean with me. Um, please comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Um, or if you prefer the music to the background, um, just let me know what you're thinking here. Anyway, feel free to subscribe and we'll see you again real soon.